Yeah, we had to pull the uh, uh, water truck there at the shop uh, late Friday evening when we got done because we just got through with what was hopefully our last real cold snap of the winter. We get, actually wound up getting like three inches of snow Friday night. As you can see, it didn't stick around very long. We still got a few remains of it right there though. We sprayed with our water truck a week and a half ago and had water all in the system and it wasn't winterized. You gotta take hoses and loose stuff to winterize it. So it's just easier to just pull the grain buggy out and pull the water truck back in. But we went the water truck out, get our grain buggy back in there and uh, check some wheel bearings. And then that's gonna be about all we can do to that until we get some augers in, which probably won't happen until the end of this week. But we'll have a few other uh, things to odds and ends to work on in the meantime to keep us busy. we got in that thing. I can't feel anything, but the tire's huge. I feel nothing's outside. Might not just have to take might not have to take the tire off. We'll just pop the grease cap off and see what the grease looks like in there. Get some new grease in there. Last year I filled it in. Uh, Last summer. I don't know if you, I didn't know if you did good or not. Yeah. I can't remember. Last year or two years ago. That burns tight. Can't believe it. She don't need to adjust it. It still looks good. That nothing that we need to do there. Except I might drill a tap in that cap there and put a grease circle on the outside. That's the one thing I was curious why they didn't have to where you just give it a yearly. Uh, they don't want anything. They don't want anything maintained or greased. factory? I have no idea. Alright, we'll do the same thing the other side. Uh -oh. I hear a little bit of slack in that one. You think? Yeah, she oh, needs to be tightened up. Of course, it's the one up against the wall. Yep. Well, I mean, we ain't got to take the tire off to tighten it up, though. You got to clean all that grease out and take the that monstrosity of a Carter key out. Yay! And see if we got something that'll fit on that nut. Well, that's broke. probably to be repaired. Oh, yeah. Good job. Right. Oh, well. <laughs> Break it right off. Hopefully 
Oh, they already that's go to Humboldt one. anyway. That's a big one. That's a big one. <laughs> that's gonna be a twenty-five dollar one. We ain't got a socket big enough for that. I don't think. Looks like a channel lock. It's like a three-inch socket. No, it's a second one. Second one. That's his. Pay attention, people. Come pet me. Okay. Really need to take a. Let it down to where it's just barely touching the floor. Take a little slack off of it. I'll sit it down. Close that. That should work. I'm going to try a little bit more. And Kelly saw it the uh, weld where our load cell goes in there is broke. So get the welder out. I I would like to make statement. We'll just uh we'll just back uh back off that nut until uh you get to a hole and I gotta run town anyway, I'll grab a, another carter key. One last thing we're gonna get done on this tractor. We're gonna get it done on the other tractor too. I didn't think anything about it, but. Every other year I try to change the planetary hub oil. It's just an automatic on the picker, automatic on the combine. You never really think about it on these. So I'm gonna get the, get the uh, planetary oil changed on these, uh, on this front axle. Matt's gone to get us a, a new key to stick in the uh, stick in the wheel bearing on this grain buggy, and hopefully we'll have everything buttoned up on all this until we get the new augers in. Let's see how bad she's gonna burp on me when I pull this plug. All right, well, while we doing all this oil changing and servicing, might as well change the oil in this front axle too, because it probably hadn't been done since it's brand new at the factory. So, I mean, this hydraulic oil is only over a hundred dollars for a five-gallon bucket. I mean, why not use it? <laughs> only five, only a hundred dollars. Well, over a hundred dollars now. And I got a little bit of metal shavings on the magnet. Ain't bad. Now let all that drain out. See what it looks like. Stick it on right in the way. All right, take two and a half gallons of hydraulic oil. Go around somewhere between fifty and sixty dollars at current prices. Fill this thing up. Yeah, in case some of y'all are wondering, we do recycle our oil. Once this 450-gallon uh, tank gets uh, filled up, we got a company out of Camden we call. They come and pump it all out and actually pay us just a little bit for the oil that they get.
a little nastier than the XO. Yeah. yeah. Now we gotta get that blue holy flying up. Back up to that line. Well, we done about all that we can do to this thing until we get some augers in, which probably won't be in until end of this week. So, are we gonna fulfill Kelly's request and put her one of them fancy LED quake lights on the unload auger for the fall? Uh, well, I probably do need to replace it. I knew that was a big request for the new light. Yeah, I forgot that light is out. It'll probably get a halogen one though. We got plenty laying around. Uh, Rick, we'll, we'll pull this outside, unhook it, and then we need to get this tractor ready to go spray possibly tomorrow or Wednesday. You need to get the RTK in there and hook up the hooded sprayer, grease it, and calibrate auto steer. Calibrate auto steer. So pull it out and get that stuff done. All right, we just got our RTK box mounted up in here. Let's see if we get RTK in here since we used it last fall. Hopefully nothing's wrong with my prescription. All right, we got RTK. So it looks like that part's good to go. All right, before we uh, go hook up the hooded sprayer, we got to calibrate the auto steer, the RTK, to make sure it is uh, dead on. To do that, we got to make a guidance line. All right, and then we got to go in our calibrations, nav, roll. All right, now we got to engage auto steer. Wait till our cross track air is within four inches to start the calibration. Alright, about one inch there. Now that's going to place a flag directly under the center of the toolbar. Okay. Then we're going to drive forward, turn it back, turn back around. Get back on the line and see uh, how close the flag is in the center of the toolbar. Then we're going to stop when we get back over the flag. And then he's going to measure and see how many inches off it is from the center of the dog bar. Three inches. Three inches which way? Three inches over too far this way. That's the place, three inches over the left. All right, so our flag is all set to the left, three inches. All right, now we'll repeat it just to uh, see if, make sure it's on. It's especially critical to get this right because we're gonna be using this tractor to spray our burn down strips and because there's no markers or anything on the hooded sprayer, my auto steer has to be spot on. So when I create these strips, the planter will go back and actually plant in these strips. We can't be off any. Otherwise, we'll be planting in cover crop instead of bare strip. Is that on? Okay, let's turn around. All right, Bonner says it's almost dead on. Dead. It's dead center. It's dead. All right. I'm gonna go grab the hood sprayer, break it down the shop. All points on each of the hoods degrees. Top and bottom. It's got grease down on the hood. Yeah. 
so uh, 13 times 4 equals 72. a lot of fittings. <laughs> then we got uh, pivot points here on the stacker bar. Yeah, it's like 8 there. That should be it. I'll put some water in here and then we need to uh, calibrate the flow. Make sure we're putting out exactly what we want to put out. All right, we got everything serviced, everything tightened, everything ready to go on this thing. I think so. All right, we got water in the tank. Let's uh, kick the pump on, get all the air out of the system, and then we will calibrate these nozzles, see what kind of rate we're putting out. All right, kick the pump on, see what we got. All right, we got a flow. I can see the water going in the tank. All right, hit that on switch. Go through the ball. All right, cut the hydraulic flow down. Really. All right, ready, set, go. Now we'll 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 do it for one minute. That will lose our gallons per minute. That's what we need to figure. All right, that's one minute. All right, shut it off. All right, we got about 19 ounces out of that one tip in one hour. All right, so we got 12 tips going. So 12 times 19. All right, that's 228 ounces per minute out of all 12 tips, about 128. All right, so that's 1.78 gallons per minute we're spraying. All right, we got an eight inch band times 12, eight times 12, be 96 inches is what we're actually spraying per swath. All right, so we're spraying eight feet per swath times five miles an hour. So 5,280 times five times eight we're spraying 211,200 square feet per hour, divided by 43,560 square feet. So we're covering 4.84 acres per hour. This actual spray. All right, 1.78 gallons per minute times 60. We're putting out 106.8 gallons per hour. So three, 300 gallons divided by 106.8. Oh, we should get 2.8 hours of spraying on one tank. So 2.8 times 4.84 acres per hour is 13.59 acres times, say, 28 ounces per acre, 380 divided by 128. So we're going to need three gallons of Roundup per fill-up. So eight divided by 38 inches is 21%. So 4.84 divided by 0.21. But the machine will be covering itself 23 acres per hour times 2.8. So we should get we should be able to get over around 65 acres per load, five miles an hour, 20 psi, and need three gallons of Roundup per fill up. Well, you reckon she's ready to spray about a thousand acres of burn down? I can't think of nothing else we need to do. We got one more vital important thing to do. Put a flag on it. Gotta fill up your fancy hand wash station you got uh, there. It can stay empty. I got one on the water truck. <laughs>
That's what I was gonna ask. We're gonna use the water wagon or I was, gonna use the water I truck. ain't touching that water wagon unless I unless I have to. <laughs> uh, guy, uh, on the last video, when, the video when we're actually working on this, that's what this tank is. This is actually a clean water tank to wash your hands with, but we got one on the water truck, so no need to use it. So no uh, extra added weight. I know this probably gonna turn out to be kind of a short video and all the good action seemed to happen in the first few minutes of the video, but it's the way it is on the farm. A lot of just, just a lot of just kind of more boring stuff, just preventative maintenance and going through and making sure all the I's are dotted and all the T's are crossed. That, so hopefully you've hit off any potential problems before you actually get out to the field and before it becomes a big problem. So I reckon that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, I don't, maybe tomorrow after lunch it'll be dry enough start doing some burn down we got some really pretty weather for the rest of this week but then i think friday night and saturday we got more rain coming in and then uh potentially a pretty good storm system coming in first part of next week so i'm gonna try and get as many of these thousand acres of corn and cotton ground get these strips burnt down get try and get as much of that done as i can this week because uh, it's getting that time of year these cover crops are going to get wild and woolly in a hurry and then it becomes a jungle we don't feel like fighting with yeah it's always a little better to get a little get it a little early than it is to be a little late but I, mean, I should be able to cover 150 acres a day easily easily with this this thing i mean i only had to fill up once every you know twice a day so how many acres can you get across in the tank load around 65 acres according to my calculation should be able to get around 65 acres of physically going across on a tank load now of that 65 acres i'm spraying 21 percent of that which is i don't know what that work out to like 16 15 16 acres that as that is physically getting sprayed yeah i reckon next video gonna be uh me doing some spraying and then probably Zach's got some odds and ends to do. We got yards needing to be sprayed. Got to service the front end on the other tractors. Some odds and ends like that. Probably going around some fields pushing limbs out of the way. Because until we get some parts in, there really ain't nothing else we can work on. And I don't think we're going to have any parts at the earliest until the middle of the week. Include, including Zach's surprise that we got coming on the way. Anyway, that's going to be a story for another video. Appreciate y'all watching. We'll see you in the next one.